this is this is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back with another episode of Quick Hits. Uh, today we're going to... Sorry about that. Just one show today. Um, things came up today. Typically we do two shows. Uh, we only got to do one show today. But it's going to be a good one. Uh, big news broke out. Former uh, WBC junior lightweight champ, super featherweight champ... <clears throat> Miguel Patrell says he's moving up to 135, but before we get into t- to that, please like and subscribe and share on all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you twice a day, every day. I, I know we only came at you once a day, but twice a day, every day, uh, 8 to 10 minutes, just real quick, up to date, like you keep, keep you up to date, on track with everything that's going on in the boxing world. Um, so please like, subscribe, uh, share on all forms of social media, share with a friend, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, but let's get into today's news. Uh, today's story, Miguel Burchelt, um says he's moving up to 135. Um, this seems pretty logical. Uh, he, he's coming off a, a, a horrible knockout. Um, he didn't look good. He looked slow. He looked drained. They said the weight cut was really bad. If you saw him weigh in prior to the last fight, he looked emaciated right he looked he looked drained he looked like morales or hooker did when they waited it's like this is probably not the best way for you um and he's moving up to 35 i wanted to get into a couple of things that he said um and i want to give Burchell credit uh being a a real champion um and, and not making excuses like we've seen from wilder and um loma recently uh, but owning the loss uh, and I'm going to read the quote. There's a couple of quotes here I want to read. No, it was not my night. We must not demerit the work that my opponent Oscar did. He made a great fight, made a great preparation, and, well, the result is there. The truth is that we already, uh, it was already very hard for me to make super featherweight, um, but I don't want to make any excuses. At the end of the day, I think there are none in boxing. It was not my night. It was not the best version of myself. The truth is that I did not feel as fast as I did on other nights. It may be that the way it affected me, maybe going to lightweight is something I that I see in the near future. Um, without a doubt, moving to the lightweight division is something that I see as being very close uh, in, in my future. But we are going to sit down with our team, with Mario Abraham, with Fernando Beltran, and, and Alfredo Caballero, and see what was the, <clears throat> what was done. Uh, so. That's how a champion owns it, right? He gave Oscar Valdez full credit for that fight. I, I don't understand why it's so difficult for guys, champions like Wilder and Loma, to recognize that they lost, that the other guy was better, and that they need to make adjustments. I mean, what Wilder and Loma done is far more embarrassing than what happened to Wilder, what happened to Loma, or what happened to uh, Burchell. Um... But I, 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 not, not, not to get off the topic. I, I think for Chel- going to 135 is an interesting move. Uh, I do, uh, especially the top rank side. Obviously, there's Loma there. There's um, oh, my brain's not working right now. Th- th- there's uh, Loma there. Um, Tank Davis fights it that way. It can, uh, but not on the top rank side, um, and. TP Lopez, Loma and TP Lopez are there on that side. Um, obviously, I think he would take a tuna fight, a get right fight, uh, kind of test the weight at 135 first, and then test one of those big names. But a Burchell Loma fight would be so fascinating. Such an amazing, interesting contrast in styles. Um, I, I don't know if, if he'd be a sitting target for TP Lopez's power. But could he push Lopez? Could he test Lopez? Could he make Lopez uncomfortable and break him down? I don't know. They're interesting. And then the, on 
outside of the top ranks, like I said, there's Tank Davis at that weight. There's, uh, you know, the other big names, the Devin Haney's, the Hector Horrors, the Ryan Garcia's. There's all those big names. So there's plenty of interesting fights at 135. Um, so I like the move. I think it's probably in his best interest to, like, look, the weight cut, they said, was extremely difficult. It looked like it. He didn't look like himself in the ring. Not to dis- Again, not to discredit Valdez. Valdez did a great job. But I've been saying for quite some time, this guy's too big to keep fighting at this weight class. Like, he's uh, he's not a, a 130-pounder. He's a 135-pounder. He's got to move up now. And 135 is not going to be a piece of cake for him to make either because he's a big dude. I mean, it was a massive 130-pound. It was like when Jamal Chawla was making 154 back in the day. How is he getting down to that? Or Jared Hurd getting down to 54. How is he getting down to that size? I mean, he managed to do it, but it's it's not healthy, and it's not sustainable. So I think for Chelko to 135 is a logical decision. I think it's the best decision. Um, and I, 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 I think a Loma or a Lopez fight in the near future is certainly, certainly makeable. Um like, are they winnable? The Loma fight's winnable. Um, because Loma's not bigger than him, so it's not like he's going to be fighting a bigger guy. Lopez is bigger. Younger, stronger, faster. I don't know that he's stronger. Younger, faster, uh, the bigger hitter. But he's never fought a guy who could come after him like Burchelt does. So I'd be interested in seeing that fight. Like I, I, I think that's a really good fight. Um, Burchelt could fight Nakatani first. I think that's an interesting fight at 135. Um, could he fight Kome? That would be an interesting fight. Like, there's interesting fights to be made uh, before he jumps right into Loma or Lopez. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think he's going to do well? Do you think he'll be a two-weight division world champion? Uh, it's going to be tough at 35 with all the names, but Burchell's Ber- good. You know, um, he's top 15 pound-for-pound type of guy. Uh, I don't think it's unreasonable to say Burchell will be a world champ at 135, but certainly not a guarantee either. Um... Do you like the way he handled himself? You know, not making excuses like Wilder and Loma. Um, let me know what you guys think. I'm pumped to see him at 135. I think there's good fights for him. I think he's, he makes the division even more interesting, and it's already one of the more interesting divisions in the sport. Um, let me know what you guys think. Like and subscribe. Remember, Quick Hits comes at you twice a day, uh, 8, 10 minutes a day, every day, twice a day, um, except on Sundays. We only have one show there on Sundays. Um, but we keep you up to date. Real quick on everything that's going on in the world of boxing. Follow us at 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Remember to hit the bell icon, hit the thumbs up button, share us on all forms of social media. Uh, it is March 5th, 2021. Uh, Miguel, uh, Ivan Calderon is still not in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Let's make that change. Let's get the Iron Boy in the class of 2021. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. <laughs> Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.